Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you the books and resources that we are using to put together our B unit. Now we've done a B unit in the past. You can find that link in the description box below. It's going to have how I put that unit together as well as all of the projects we've done for that unit. So you can find all the things that we've previously done for that unit on that playlist. Now I'm going to continue to add to that playlist for the new projects that we're doing, but anything that we We've previous, previously done, even if I'm doing it again, it's not going to be made into a new video. Okay, so I'm going to show you the materials that we are using. Now, some of the things are the same as our previous unit, uh, and then I've got a lot of new materials as well. So I want to share with you how I'm actually putting this unit together. This is a completely different approach than what I typically do. This is going to be part of our lightning round series of unit studies that these units for the science units are only going to last one week. So I'm showing you more material and more projects than we can do in that one week. But these, uh, so I'm just going to try to do whatever we can for that one, one week and then that's it. Okay, so I'm also going to be lesson planning using my composition book here. I just have, um, you know, some some notes on what we want to do, some of the books and resources that we want to use. Um, let me just show you how we previously did it for our bird unit study. I just wrote out the books, the references, and the activities. So it's a little bit more of like a checklist lesson plan rather than a day-to-day -day lesson plan. I might do the same for this unit. I might do it differently. I'm not quite sure because the limitation is on the time, not on the activities. Okay, so let me show you some of the books that I've got, and I'm going to then show you these projects that... I have here as well. Nature Anatomy. Now we have been using this book for our nature units for some time now and I have mixed feelings about it every time I pull it out to use it. I have the same mixed feelings about it. It's a gorgeous book. I would still get it even though it's not been incorporated into our units as well as I hoped. It's just a really, really beautiful book. So I went through to find the passages on bees and there's only just this one small section here. And I am just going to be using this two page spread uh, and we're gonna do some watercolors for, uh, for this project. Actually, let me explain how we're going to be doing our written work and our artistic work for this unit. In the past, our science units have been project heavy and we haven't done a lot of written work for them, even though we've had a lot of art. And this time around, based on some previous unit studies that we've done, uh, I am going to be doing the written work a little bit differently uh, be based on the success of what we've previously done. Okay, let me just show you this. So, Okay, check out all of these cards that we have made this past year. Isn't that incredible? Of course, they're laminated, laminated, so they're quite thick. Um, what we've been doing, and it's turned out to be like a huge success, is we have been making our own Professor Noggins trivia cards. Professor Noggins inspired trivia cards. Let me show you what the Professor Noggins game looks like. I love these games. They're trivia games, and they have so many different topic areas, history and science and geography, politics, all kinds of stuff. Not on math, I don't think I've seen. And they have these really beautiful illustrations on one side. And then on the flip side, there's a set of easy questions and hard questions. They're trivia based. And so uh, sometimes at the start of a unit, we have a little bit more trouble answering the questions. But by the end of the unit, after reading all of our resources, we're a lot more capable. And then sometimes we challenge ourselves with the hard questions. It comes with a dice as well. We don't use a dice actually that often. We just kind of do the first question and then the second question, just kind of that way. But you can roll the dice. It has just three numbers. And we really, really, really love playing this game. It's great for opening activities. We like it so much. We ended up doing our own version of the trivia-based cards based on the units that we were doing. So I am using some Fabri watercolor paper. In the past, I really enjoyed using the 90 pound watercolor paper. I've recently upgraded, let me grab it for you. So we recently upgraded to the 140 pound watercolor paper. This is by Fabriano. This is nine inches by 12 inches and it's cold press. And you can just 
here, just how heavy it is. And the texture, well, maybe you can't see that, I'm not sure. The, it is textured versus the hot press paper, which is smooth. And I, I, I like the, the textured paper now, maybe in the future I'll change, but so far I'm still really enjoying the textured paper. We'll watercolor or use some other kind of art medium on the front of the uh, card. Right now, I'm really into using our Distress inks. I love, love, love the range of colors. They're actually ink pads that you just kind of smush onto a non-porous surface and then it just gives you enough ink to work with. We use them as watercolors, but they dry permanent. Really great product. Really, really love it a lot. Learned about it through the scrapbooking and art world. And you could use any kind of paint medium. You could use just regular watercolors or acrylic paints or anything. Uh, mostly I like the way that watercolors look. My son prefers either drawing pencils like color pencils or uh, recently he did some with chalk pastels which was a little bit more challenging but I think that his artwork turned out really beautifully. Okay so the way that we're going to do the written work for this, oh, let me show you the back side actually. So on the back side, I've got questions and then the very, very bottom, we've got answers. My son did the same thing too. He did write the answers, thankfully, because we forget sometimes. <laughs> and so this is a really great project, in my opinion, to to represent the learning for a unit and then it's useful later on because they're, they're super beautiful number one and then they're really educational it's a lot of fun to play if you've got students who are who enjoy the competition factor if they don't i would just make this a co cooperative game and just everyone playing together to to win together but basically, we'll play this similar to the Professor Noggins game. We'll ask a question. If you get the question correct, you get to keep the card. And at the end, we tally up how many cards you get. And then that's the winner. We don't give prizes or anything. It's just for fun. And so having to read the information and then come up with questions is really challenging. And it really tests how much you actually know, especially if you have to come up with multiple choice questions. That's that. That's it's. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. It's uh, really a great way to just bring in all the information. You don't have to do it that way, by the way. You could just use this as narration cards. You could do a bunch of watercolors for the unit that you did. And then on the back side, you could do narration. I like the size of this because it's not overwhelming. I noticed with our main lesson books, especially for science, uh, it was a little bit overwhelming to write an entire page based on something that we learned. For history, it seemed to be a little bit easier. So anyway... That is my long-winded explanation of how we're going to be doing the content for this unit. We probably won't have more than six cards for the entire unit since this is going to be a bit more of, of a faster unit. Um, so just thoughts on that. So that's, we're going to do watercolor of that and then have some questions about that. And that's how this book is going to get used. Okay. Some of these books. I've previously used. I try to have a lot of picture books in our units as well as nonfiction books and whenever possible some kind of fiction book or some kind of read aloud. It's a little bit harder I found with the science units versus the history units. You can find a lot of historical fiction but with the science units it's a little bit more challenging. So if you know a good fiction book that is surrounding th these topics or any topic that you just love let me know we previously did my side of the mountain when we did our bird unit and i thought that fit really well with our bird unit and we also did the desperate adventures of of what is xeno and alia <laughs> goodness and that worked really well with our bird unit as well okay backyard books are you a bee we have this as well for are you an ant i believe and it's just beautiful. It's not too much writing. It's story driven, beautiful illustrations, just really overall a really wonderful picture book. We also have The Fascinating World of Bees. This is more nonfiction. Um, right. So just more information versus like a storybook, even though it's picture book format. I love, love, love picture books, whether they're just like a story or they are, uh, part of you know nonfiction part of our units I I they are my favorite resource I absolutely love them especially when the illustrations or the photographs are really beautiful and captivating it's yeah I could just look at this all day long super beautiful okay this is new for this unit my friend got this book last year I 
absolutely loved it. I thought I would just do a few of the projects from it. And then as I flip through the book, I'm like, I want to do this project. I want to do this project. I want to do the whole thing. And hey, the book itself actually turns into a beehive. So I just, I got it. Now I had seen this one on Nature Watch previously, made a huge order with Nature Watch, didn't order this book. It's really hard to see the insides of the books. And because this was a book on projects and experiments, and I had already previously ordered this one for our bee unit before also from nature watch and we had already done a bunch of these projects i thought i didn't need another project book until i saw it and then of course i needed it so this is this is just awesome 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 i cannot wait to do these projects my daughter has previously done them already with my her co-op with my my friend who led the co-op and it was just phenomenal so um that is something that we're going to be doing a lot of i I don't know if I want to take apart the book for the beehive, but I mean, you gotta, because <laughs> it's, I don't want to damage the book. Anyway, we're going to do it. Don't worry. Okay. So those are going to be the projects or that's going to be the inspiration for the projects. Let me just tell you before I move on, actually, let me just set this aside since we're talking about projects. Let me tell you the other projects that we had planned. Previously, we have done two, uh, two uh, kits from Nature Watch. I love, love, love Nature Watch. Let me just show you. Uh, Nature Watch has uh, classroom kits on all different kinds of science topics, and they also cater to the homeschooling community by taking all of those kits and just giving you one, like one, um, one, uh, one kit, <laughs> enough for one student, basically. And I think you can get a collection of them as well. I can't remember. But anyway, I always buy the classroom kits because we will use them again as we are now. Also, we might get a couple of students together and do it together. Or my kids will just do multiple ones. And so for the B unit, for for making the candles especially, I liked getting the classroom kit because we could just roll candles all day long and never tire of it. But some of the other kits, like I think the one on... The phases of the moon, that's one that you would just want to get one. There's they, they don't really want to do that one again and again. And same with the rocks one. I think that was, you know, not as useful to get the classroom kit. So anyway, this kit, it doesn't come like this. It comes in a really nice box. It has enough for, I think, 25 or 30 students. It comes with the wax sheets and then the wicks. And then it comes with information. So you can see that we've done this uh, a lot. We have... We had trouble burning them. That's a whole other thing that I have to figure out how to do properly is uh, burn these without them just getting all over the place. Uh, and I believe this kit also came with honey sticks, which is awesome. Okay, so that was that kit. We're going to do that one again. And it comes with information on um, the kit, how to do it, um, stuff that you can share with the students, additional information. So it's all really academic and uh, hands-on. Okay, so I've kept the other worksheets for... So this is, this is basically the honeycomb kit, but they also have a honey tasting kit and this one again we got the classroom kit so we have a lot of leftover worksheets and it comes with two worksheets they're super gorgeous and you can see that it has enough for a whole classroom so you might want to collect a couple of students together because the value of getting the classroom kit is better than the individual kits so it comes i only have the honey that they didn't like this is i think the buckwheat honey it comes with a, a four different honeys, honey sticks, different varieties, and then you you can taste them and you can smell them and you try to guess what they are. And then there's, there's this one here and it goes over the different, um, like what does it look like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? So that you can write it for all four different varieties. Okay, so we, I'm not going to buy this kit again. I've I think I've purchased, purchased it twice previously. And while it's awesome, we've done it and I want to approach this one slightly different. We love honey wherever we're going. When we're traveling, we try to buy some honey. And so I have enough varieties to do this on our own. So that's how we're going to approach it this time. So we're still going to do our honey tasting and we're also going to do our beeswax uh, candle 
candles, but we're actually going to also do something a little bit different to go along with it. We're going to be pouring our own candles, which we do every year at the start of the year. We're, we will pour our own beeswax candles and then we use them in our homeschool room. We light them at the start of the day. It's just kind of tradition for us. And uh, these are just little mason jars. You can use anything. I really, really, really like all natural beeswax. It has a very mild scent. Uh, as a side note, as I have gotten older, I really do not like scented candles. Uh, the, the smell is just really strong, but the beeswax has a very light scent, if you like it, you know. And the other thing that I've learned is that burning beeswax candles actually cleans the air. So that's an, an extra perk. Uh, I will be using Texas beeswax. This is Better Shade Butter and Skin Foods Company. You can find it on Amazon. This is not my favorite beeswax. My favorite beeswax is Topanga Quality Beeswax by, by, oh my goodness, I can't remember the name. It starts with a B. I'm going to leave that link down in the description box below. By far, that has been my favorite, favorite, favorite beeswax ever. Oh my gosh, the name is, is escaping me. It's kind of bugging me now. Anyway, that, um, that th that beeswax was it's local for us it's in LA area and it just smells phenomenal it is the best beeswax we've ever used this is a distant second and then you can get some really horrible beeswax that smells kind of burnt and chemically so you want to just be really aware of of the beeswax that you're using uh for this definitely splurge definitely uh spend the money get something that's high quality okay so we're going to be using this to make our beeswax candles like we normally do but we're also going to recreate this project that i did last year with the kids we made our own lip balm and we also made uh bar lotion and this time we're around we're going to try it again and make more of a soft lotion and so we're just going to be doing things that we're going to you know the different uses usages for beeswax because that's kind of cool okay I have this model of a bee, which is slightly creepy to me. I'll, I'll admit it's a little dusty um, and it's, you know, super large. But anyway, we got that from Nature Watch and that just goes along with our unit. I forgot to show you the wicks that we use for doing our beeswax candles. You don't need to use, well, you can use any wick that you want. I These have been working fine, but before we got these, we just used Baker's Twine and that seemed to work pretty well. Uh, do watch your candles when they are burning because we have poured larger candles and without realizing it, there have been huge crevices in the center of the candle. It's a whole art to pour in candles. And if you are not paying attention, you, you can cause a fire. It can, the wick can, the entire wick can catch on fire if the crevice is near the wick. So just please bear that in mind. Don't ever leave it unattended. Let me show you the rest of the books and then that's it because <laughs> we're at the end of this. Uh, the life cycle of a honeybee. This is new for us. You can see that there are a lot of books that we have that are really similar because I'm buying a lot of these books online and because because I can't see the insides of them, it's really hard to tell which books are going to be great books and great additions to our units and which ones aren't going to work out that great. Life and Times of a Honey Bee. This is a really beautifully illustrated picture book. I really love it. Again, you can see that there's a uh, repetition here. I love, love, love the You Wouldn't Want to Be books. And this is You Wouldn't Want to Live Without Bees. And this is also new for this unit. We picked this up after our unit was over last time. And I just, I whenever possible, I like to add these books into our units. They're super playful, kind of whimsical. The content is just superb. And then to lighten it all up, you get these really funny illustrations and really funny dialogue on the sides that just kind of keep it interesting for children. You initially i'm like oh this is just not going to be high quality and it, i was so wrong i they're just awesome the bumblebee queen i really like this book we've read it multiple times not just for the unit but what i really like about this book is that it's story driven you get to see the whole life cycle of a bumblebee in these small little captions here which is great for our younger students but then you have all of this nonfiction kind of a little bit drier information in these other areas in the book this little smaller font and what i like about books like this and and i believe the diana aston books uh, a nest is noisy and an egg is quiet and a seed is lively all of 
or a rock is lively a seed is anyway i can't remember she has a bunch of them those books have a similar format as well where you've got smaller or uh, less content for the younger students and more drier content for the older students so if when i'm putting together my units i want to bear in mind that i'm going to be having multiple ages multiple students multiple interests and i want to have something that's going to to speak to all of those students now a picture book works well for all ages, in my opinion, especially adults. But sometimes when you have an older student, they might not just want to sit down with you uh, to read a picture book. But if you've got a younger student and you're reading it to the younger student, the older student's definitely going to sit next to you and want to enjoy that, or at least sit in the vicinity and listen and enjoy. So I like having things that work for multiple ages because the older students, it's a little nostalgia. They remember reading picture books with you when they were younger, but they're still enjoying it as an older student without feeling a little embarrassed that they're reading a picture book. Um, all of these books books I typically read aloud. There are some books that I assign to my students, but not before about 10 years of age in general. Most of these are things that I read aloud or that I just story tell. Bumblebee at Apple Tree. I don't believe I had this book the last time we did this unit. I'm not crazy about this book. I don't, I don't really know why. I, it, it's really silly. It has nothing to do with the book, but I actually just don't like the large format. Seriously, I can be a little bit silly like that. Um, the illustrations are nice, but I'm just not feeling them. And I can't remember if we've read this or not, but if I can't remember, it must have not <laughs> really stuck with me. But still, check the review video at the end of this unit because I could be really wrong about this book and it could be like my favorite resource out of all of them. I found this book at our local library bookstore. This was labeled as an antique book and it was, it was pricier than the other books at $2, but I, I, uh, I got it because it was just super fabulous in the sense that I have nothing like this. Ooh, I don't want to separate those pages. <gasps> oh no, look at that. It's tearing. Ugh. I need a book doctor. Oh no. Anyway, uh, you're not going to be able to find something new like this. So if you find vintage books that you love, go for it. I'm not a huge vintage book fan, but um, that just kind of spoke to me. This is, uh, I want to show you the two new books. This I just received and we already started reading it. It's really beautiful. And I want to show you the other one here. These two books were new for this unit. And honestly, this is the book that inspired me doing the unit again because when I saw it, I was just on someone else's channel or Instagram. I don't remember. I was like, I have to have that book. But let me show you this one first. It's called The Bee Book. And okay, this is so not the point of reviewing books, but let me just tell you, this paper is just really nice. It has that nice kind of uh, rough finish. It's thick paper. Even though these are computer-generated animations, I'm still loving them. I typically like the more hand-drawn, watercolor, um, oil painting kind of illustrations. But I'm really starting... These these types of illustrations are really starting to grow on me quite a bit. Okay, so I, we already started reading this book. Really enjoy it. Sometimes a book that has a lot of information like this feels very overwhelming to me as a parent, as a teacher. And so sometimes I wonder whether this is the best way to present this kind of for, uh, information for students. I don't know. This is just, these are just my thoughts. Uh, once we read through this book, I can tell you a little bit more about how it worked with my, with my, uh, students. Uh, bees, a honeyed history. Okay. Hello. How gorgeous. How gorgeous is this? I mean, wow. So this is super, super awesome because you get to include history, probably geography and science all together in one book for one unit. That for me just takes it over the top. It's like 11 out of 10. It's better than a 10 out of 10 for a book. Uh, but here's my concern about this book is that I, again, find it slightly overwhelming super gorgeous but uh, i don't know i don't know I, I might be like well that's just too much but it's so beautiful it has such an awesome concept that i'm i'm really really excited to include this in this unit so this is how we're going to do this i'm going to be writing down all of the books and obviously 
Actually, maybe I won't do that for my lesson plan. You can go to the blog post that accompanies this video. You'll see all of the books that we're using, more pictures, all of the projects that we've previously done, as well as all the projects that we plan to do, or, you know, as the unit progresses, you'll be able to see all those projects with new videos and new descriptions to all of the things that we're doing on that single blog post. So just one place to get all of the information, uh, and possibly links to the, the different books and resources that I'm using. I just want to say that uh, I really enjoy getting materials from three particular vendors when it comes to science. Uh, well, two for science and one is sometimes hit or miss for science. But basically, a core naturalist and Nature Watch are two of my favorite science vendors. They have phenomenal products, really innovative materials. I also like Rainbow Resource, but because it is a Christian based, a Christian based company, they have a lot of things that might not work for uh, a non Christian homeschooler or a secular homeschool. So just bear in mind some of those things. I think for a B unit, you'd be fine, but when you get into like geology and mostly geology and and evolution, those kinds of things, you're not going to find things that are secular. So just want to put it out there if you are concerned about getting books that are, have a secular approach. Okay, so I think that covers more than everything we're going to do for this unit. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to head over to the blog post that accompanies this video for more information and pictures. And if you want to see what our homeschool looks like on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.